This is a story that has got everyone talking. Everyone knows that Elon Musk is a brilliant entrepreneur, but now he's trying out his luck in floating peace deals between nations. And this is what Elon Musk has now done. After floating a possible deal to end the Russia-Ukraine war, billionaire CEO of Tesla, Elon Musk, has now come up with what he thinks is a brilliant suggestion to end the China-Taiwan conflict. The Musk says that the tension between China and Taiwan can be resolved by handing over some amount of control of the Taiwanese island that is presently autonomously governed to Beijing. Now, Elon Musk further believes that Beijing and Taipei then can have some kind of an arrangement, believe it or not, that can be somehow more lenient than the arrangement that presently prevails over Hong Kong of one state, two systems rule. Now, the world's richest man says that the conflict over Taiwan is inevitable and has also warned against the potential impact of the conflict not only on Tesla but also on the iPhone makers and indeed the wider world economy. The Musk's Tesla electric car company operates a large factory in Shanghai that accounts for almost about half of Tesla's global deliveries till last year. The Beijing considers Taiwan as one of its renegade provinces. It has long vowed to bring Taipei completely under its control and has said that it would like to do so even if it needs to use force. The Taiwan, on the other hand, strongly objects to China's claims of sovereignty over it and has said that the island's 23 million people have the right to decide their own future. Now, earlier this week, remember, Elon Musk had caused a big controversy after proposing that Ukraine must permanently cede the Crimean Peninsula to Russia. And the new referendums must in fact be held under the United Nations to determine the fate of the Russian-controlled territory. His plan, of course, had drawn some sharp criticism from Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. And indeed, there were a lot of voices within Ukraine who suggested that Elon Musk should not talk about these things because he simply does not understand the complexity that is involved. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of how this peace deal sort of a suggestion by Elon Musk is of course being perceived both within China and indeed in Taiwan, we're being joined by Ross Darrell Feingold, who's an Asia political risk analyst. He's joining us live from Taipei at this point of time. Now, Ross, thank you very much indeed for taking time out and speaking to us. Now, Elon Musk is a maverick billionaire. He's the world's richest man. And what he says is of course taken very seriously just a few days ago, he floated this idea of a possible peace deal sort of a thing between Russia and Ukraine, and that was not received well. How is this possible peace deal sort of a plan of Elon Musk between China and Taiwan being received on either side of the Taiwanese Strait? Well, the interesting thing from the China side is the foreign ministry today uh, said that this is uh, an internal matter. So they used one of their usual talking points you know, that basically we don't like foreigners opining on this. And uh, state television, CCTV, uh, also called his remark inappropriate. So that's a bit interesting because very often if, if a, a foreigner, someone as prominent as Elon Musk, uh, proposes that China basically be allowed to uh, unify uh, Taiwan under a formula that China actually likes. Uh, normally, you would think China would be supportive of that, but I think they, they want to keep a little distance from Musk because he's a businessman, and I think they know that his primary interest is profit. It's not the, the unity of the Chinese nation. So uh, unlike, say, a politician or a scholar who may have said that, and China uh, government or media would have said, well, this is great. Even an esteemed uh, politician or scholar thinks this is a good idea. Again, I think they're a little suspicious of the motivations of a business person. Now, here in Taiwan, uh, no surprise, this has not made anyone happy here. Mm -hmm. uh, po politicians in Taiwan, regardless of whether or not they support what we often call Taiwan independence, or they support the status quo uh, into the future, or even if they supported the long-term unity sometime in the future once China democratizes, almost no one here in Taiwan has ever supported uh, this one country, two systems formula that China has implemented for Hong Kong and Macau. 
And, and that that was the case even before more recent events in Hong Kong changed the political atmosphere there. Uh, so so this formula uh, right. really, again, it, it's never been supported here. And I think for Musk to say that, it, it, you know, as you indicated, it, it reflects a, a lack of uh, understanding of uh, politics here in Taiwan. Absolutely indeed. Now, what Elon Musk is, is, is in fact suggesting is a possible, you know, a solution to the China-Taiwan conflict is what Beijing is saying that is one system, two system, uh, one state, two systems rule, which is precisely what Beijing has been offering Taipei. So how does Taiwan perceive this? Does Taiwan somehow see Elon Musk as someone who's effectively talking the Chinese line on this issue? That's how it's going to be viewed here, uh, certainly by uh, pundits on television. There'll probably be some uh, non-government organizations that organize protests outside uh, the Tesla dealerships. I would expect that to occur, if not on Sunday, uh, then maybe next week. Monday's a public holiday here, so it could occur then or, or again later in the week. Uh, there'll be some politicians who will definitely try to get some traction out of this. The, the challenge, though, for the government here in Taiwan, which did issue a statement today, but it's, it's kind of uh, official speak, right, that mm -hmm. uh, uh, the opinions of the Taiwanese people need to be uh, uh, listened to and the future is up to Taiwan and we never supported this kind of uh, model for unification, et cetera, et cetera. But I think they want to be careful and not using the harshest language that right. you would hope that they would use. Uh, again, they, they don't want to offend a big international businessman either. Absolutely. He is the biggest businessman out there. He's the world's richest man. But, you know, this is something that a lot of people would, of course, say is Elon Musk by putting forth these suggestions that not anyone would take seriously unless they happen to be on the side of China in, in the suggestion that is put forth between China and Taiwan. Um, is it being viewed as some kind of headline hunting on the part of Elon Musk by putting forth a suggestion that virtually no one takes seriously except for the fact that it gets reported very widely in the media? That's a great question, and unfortunately, there's no easy answer. And I, I think, in all seriousness, you know, we could put aside that he has 108 million followers on Twitter. Maybe he's just trying to get headlines. But for policymakers here in Taiwan uh, and elected politicians, they do have to take this very seriously because if they want the world, not just the region, but but the entire world to see the issue from a, a Taiwan perspective or, or just a neutral perspective, then they have to push back against uh, suggestions from someone as prominent as Elon Musk that, again, as you said, really reflects China's proposal and its proposal that China has made for over 40 years uh, for unification with Taiwan, which, again, has consistently been rejected by governments and, and, and the the population broadly here. Right. So so it can't be ignored. Uh, and I think we'll also see some debate here in Taiwan as to how forcefully the government should respond. And, and there was a little bit of that today as well, where politicians said, hey, Madam President, President Tsai, you need to come out forcefully and criticize him. But but as I said, I, I think there's there's some internal uh, challenges there among the, 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 the president's advisors, whether or not they want to hit hard at a prominent global business person. Absolutely. Indeed, it'll be very interesting to see as to how Taiwan responds, if at all it chooses to respond to these comments by Elon Musk. Thank you very much indeed, Ross Darrell Feingold, for joining us from Taipei and getting us all those insights there. Thank you. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.